Thank you very much, General Schiffer, for his very his fascinating lecture. I would like to move on to our next lecture and say that the lecture by Professor Ruth Gavison is not it is not no coincidence that it follows the lecture by by Schaeffer, but the reason is that we at the in, at the INSS view the get, take a comprehensive approach to security. It is clear that security is, as Nimrod said, it is tanks and planes and all other types of military equipment. But we think that security also relates to fundamental questions about the characteristics. Of the, st of the st of Israeli society within the state, there is no better person to present her approach about this topic than Professor Ruth Gavison, who is a, a, a professor of law, and she she is the recipient of the Israel Prize. And if I can add, if I can add, she is also my dear friend. I'm very pleased to be here today, and my challenge is a challenge that, I don't know if it's a smaller challenge, but it is a great challenge as well because I have to discuss Israel as a Jewish and democratic country, which is a topic that I teach in a, 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 an annual course in university and also explain why this is a topic that is not only ideological or legal or constitutional but also how is it how it is related to aspects of the, uh, of national security i therefore would say will we'll present the outlines it will be very brief you will have to You'll have to take my word for the fact that every claim that I make and every explanation that I give I have all, can all be expanded upon and have been expanded upon in various publications and publications by other, by other experts. And I will be happy if the, the, re the outcome of this lecture will be that um, other people will take interest in this topic and be aware of its importance. So first of all, what is a Jewish and democratic country, state? A Jewish and democratic state is comprised of a state which is territory, which is rulership, it has a population. It is the political arrangement that claims that claims a mandate for to protect that territory by force, and it de and it defines the priorities for distributing resources throughout the country through, uh, th across the board. Two different characteristics of Judaism and, democ and democracy. Both have many, merry variations. So the question of what a Jewish and dem democratic country is is a very complex question. I recommend, from uh, from uh, from one perspective, to focus on these two key words. A democratic country, in my opinion, is a country in which the regime is based on the fundamental principle that the legitimacy of the rulership is based is rooted in the agreement of the authority of the entire population. And this is reflected by the fact that institutes, the decisive institutes of the legislation and and the enforcement the in enforcement bodies namely the government are are in are pl put in place by general elections by the entire population that is based based on the legal based on the laws of the country democracy in this case means equality for all citizens which is expressed not only in in economic equality or any other, but it must, it must, there must be equality in the face of the law for each person in the country, regardless of, of training, of religion, education. There is each person has one as a single, as a, as a single vote. But this is, a, this is the primary principle of equality. The second issue is that democracy guarantees the freedom of every citizen. Uh, to take to take an active part in the decision making that is related to the person's fate and the society in which the person lives 
this is not a problem free uh, this is not a problem free regime but it is the method that is the preferable preferable than over any others than we can imagine so what is and what is a Jewish state? There are many there are many que there are great uh, great questions about what that means about Jews in Israel and abroad anti-Israel voices and many others. I want to give a I want to offer propose a definition that says that a Jewish a Jewish country is defined by the need for a nation for self-identity. Self-identity means a single place in the world in which uh, which this unit, this uh, this national unit has a majority. And since they have a majority, they can take control of the important aspects of the political, social, and economic considerations in the territory under discussion. From the Jewish perspective, this wish is, dra is dramatic and revolutionary because for many, many years, hundreds of years, since the days of the Second Temple Mount, for hundreds of years, the Jews did not have freedom. Did not have freedom in any country in which they had a majority. They were minorities. They were minorities distributed, dispersed in many nations, many different places. They were discriminated against. They were sometimes expelled and sometimes destroyed. But they were always a minority and were completely dependent on the goodwill of their hosts, Both, whether on the physical level and the. Well, uh, on the cultural and financial level, and on the cultural level, and what is mo and what is most important, the ident and level of their identity. In Israel, the uh, Zionist, as well as the Zionist attempt to change this situation from its root and give the Jews the opportunity to be ident to be independent in a single place that is also their their historical homeland. It is the only place in which they can enjoy the benefits of independence. And as the Declaration of the State says, they were they become independent and gave the world the book of the the eternal book of books the state of israel from this perspective is a jewish state because it is the only country in the world in which jews have the right to be the majority and therefore to see the state as the place in which they can realize their their uh, their right for uh, for independent for an independent for independence this doesn't necessarily mean uh, contrary to things that are said by other people it doesn't mean that it's a jewish state uh, from the religious perspective this the, the jewishness of the state is not reflected in religion there is a very tight there is a very close connection between between religion and religion culture and nationality but the definition of the definition of the jewish state is not necessarily religious the jewish state is not only is not a state that is exclusively jewish it is a state that has non-jews that protects the human rights of each individual and its and the collective rights of all of its citizens the state of israel is a country that was that was created as a result of conflict in the region the Jews arrived and established the state, established the majority through conflict with the local, with the neighbors, and the conflict has not ended until this day, and it has caused, led to the fact that many people ask this combination of Judaism and democracy, from, even from the perspective that you, that you present, is this, is this combination even possible? And I say that it is, there, there is no doubt that the answer is yes. Because not only does a Jewish country coincide with democracy, even more so, what is the, more, the fact that we define that the Jewish country has a Jewish majority and, and democracy respects the, re, respects the, w the decision made by the majority, as long as the Jewish country, ha the Jewish state has a, has a Jewish majority that is interested in maintaining human rights, but also uh, also a country that allows Jews to have freedom. Democracy does not contradict the Jewishness of the country, but the, on, on the contrary, it enhances it, it supports it. But what is true is that democracy obligates 
that the ability to influence to influence the gov the the regime is not only in the hands of the majority, and this is not maintained only by maintain by protecting human rights, which occurs in undemocratic regimes as well, but is based on the fundamental principle that a democracy is committed to the well-being of all of its residents. So the state of Israel, as a Jewish and democratic state, is obligated, along with it being a the, the Jewish homeland and being the place the only place in which Jews can be independent, it gives the Jews and the state the obliga obligations not only towards the Jews living in Israel and abroad, but special obligations towards the non-Jewish residents in Israel, specifically the, the Arab minority, which, is, which, which Israel is its homeland as well. There are people who claim that Ju Judaism and democracy don't coincide because Judaism is a religion and religion and the Jewish religion does not coincide with democracy because it doesn't accept principles of equality and the and the majority vote but there are in there are inner Juda I there are inner debates within Ju Ju within Judaism and author and orthodox Jews that say that Ju that Judaism as a religion does coincide with democracy but the Jewishness of the state is not is not exclusively a religious issue, but it's not enough to say that the combination is possible. You can also ask if the if the co the combination is justified, and I claim that it is justified. Not only do I see, think that this combination is justified, the UN and the international community thought it was justified, and they thought that this was the only way in the reality that had been created to guarantee the rights of the Jews, person uh, personal and collective level. But the entire inter national stance, it does not only guarantee the Jewish interests and rights, it of course is was they, these were of course raised based on uh, for the Palestinian the issue of Palestinian identity all of the rule all of the rulings and decisions in the throughout the UN and in the throughout the international community is that the real the proper solution to the Israel and Palestinian conflict is the is two country two states for two nations two con two states for two nations so that there will be symmetry so this, this there will be symmetry in this small small strip of land that two nations claim that is their homeland. The only reason, the only, the only option that seems reasonable, reasonable at this time is two different states. There will be an agreement in which there were a large majority in one and a minority of the other in each of the states. Each of the states will have a majority that will be able to decide how to promote its identity and how to handle issues of immigration, security, and identity. And each of the states will will be obligated to to recognize the personal and collective rights of the of the minority the minority group that is living within that country within that state. This was this was the way that we considered that was considered to be the best solution for the two nations claims for the ter claims for the territory in the region and their demand and their demands for identity and respect. So this combination is, all, is justified as well. This combination is justified on the condition that both states, as we, at the top moment, we do not have two, two states, but this will, we, this will work only if the two states can find the balance between their identity and the rights of the minorities from the other, nation, from the other nationality. Reality today is not as I have described it because there is, an, as there's, because the situation is asymmetric. There is a Jewish state that is very powerful has the capability to define itself, na to define the national identity of the Jews. There is an Arab minority in the state of Israel that benefits from personal rights for, uh, for at a, at a lar to a large extent, but has has fierce claims against the the state regarding their the claim their nation nationalist identities. But there are Palestinians that do not yet have a state. And these are one of the one of the issues on the national agenda. I don't want to get I don't want to get to get into politics at the time at this time, but asymmetry asymmetry is an ins, is a state of instability is a state of instability, and I think that is it is at this, it is an in, in the best interest of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state to find a solution for self identity 
for, 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 to realize the self-identity of the Palestinian people. So after we finish discussing all of those questions, we can raise several others. For example, assuming that you took the same path as I, that you, follow, you followed me until this point, do we think that the aspects of the current reality is justified? I don't want to get into those questions right now. If we have time at the end, then I'll get into, then, then I'll get, in, go, get into them further. Before I get into national security, I want to raise two other important questions. The first question is, is it worthwhile to anchor the identity of the Jewish and democracy the, uh, the Jewish, Jewish and democratic country, should we anchor it not only in by declaration, by statements, or by ideological claim, important ideological claims, but also in a constitution. This question ha is raised, is, has been raised again because in the coalition agreements for the new government, there was an agreement to, to legislate a fundamental law in which the which the state of Israel will be defined as a state for the na for the Israeli for the Jewish nationality, and I think that this is part of the situ the, the situation in Israel, and it's worth talking about. Israel does not have a constitution, and the question is not if the co if the, we are one of the only question countries in which there is a question of whether the constitution is correct or is good or not or should be changed. We are one of the only countries that does not have a constitution. We have have fundamental laws, and these laws from 1952, in which Israel was defined as a Jewish and democratic country, it was, in, 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 it was defined as such in a fundamental law. These laws of this type are constitutional laws. They are superior laws in the state in the state of Israel. But the process of completing the constitution has failed because of the uh, because of the opposition of the Arab minority to define Israel as a Jewish and democratic state in the constitution. They wanted to be defined as only a democratic country and the refusal of the Jewish representatives to these are, this is, these are part of some of the reasons that the Constitution has not yet been completed. In an attempt to overcome this difficulty, we, pre we pr proposed a, a fundamental law that would define the, ident define the identity of the country. On principle, I think that it is possible that questions of identity, specifically when they are so loaded, when they, when they, cause, when they cause rifts in society, it, is, might not be worth, it might not be worthwhile to add questions of identity in into a into a rigid constitution, it increases sectoralism and and induces people that you are very that you're familiar with. The, it raises questions of the issues of the identity of the country, not as an ideological or a constitutional issue, but rather as legal issues. But then there are power struggles between between courts and politicians, and these arguments are usually negative because there are very complex questions that don't have to be determined, that don't have to be resolved on legal terms, and they end up being resolved as such. So if I would be asked, if it would be more correct for the state of Israel to do what it did at the beginning, to define, to declare the establishment of the state of Israel, to declare the state as a Jewish country in which the Jews can return and the Jews can realize its vision of becoming an independent state in its own land, it is responsible for for you for you for equal for equal rights this is this is more an inspirational document and an inspir an it's it's not it, it's not a legal document it's more ideological and inspirational but now that we do have fundamental laws which do include a definition of the state as a Jewish and democratic one the we're in a different a different the circumstances are different the question is, if we, n if we do complete a, co a constitution, it is more important to, uh, the, the question is, should we discuss the issue of Jewish and, Jewish and uh, d Judaism and democracy? We have to preserve in the constitution the combination of the state as Jewish and, demo and democratic. We have to keep them on equal status. I am f 
I am in favor of anchoring these principles in the Constitution. Issues as the Jewish calendar and language education, these are all very, very important, but they do not, and they do not harm the, the, minor, the Arab minority. They are the Jewish characteristics of the state. They are not, they, they're not the characteristics of equal rights of the minority, but if they do, if these if these issues do receive are anchored by law, then we must give equal legal uh, le legal weight to the rights of ident uh, for independence and uh, for the independence of the Arab minority in Israel and the Palestinians in the land of in the land of Israel. A second question that could arise is: Is it correct to present Israel, Israel as a Jewish country or as a Jewish and democratic? country as a component of the of the diplomatic negotiations that Israel holds with its neighbors and there are many different questions does it, it just makes it makes the negotiations more complicated it didn't come up in the peace negotiations with Egypt it's an internal issue I don't want to get into this I just want to say a few words about this topic we don't have to include this issue as a precondition for for negotiations. Pre, pre by defining preconditions, we are pr avoiding holding, having negotiations in the first place. Define, uh, asking that the Palestinians accept the fact that the Jewish that this Israel is a Jewish country, but it's not true. That is not necessary. For a, a com for one of the components in a permanent agreement, in an attempt to reach and reach peace, to achieve peace, it is necessary that in a in a peace uh, in a final peace agreement, it should be determined whether that whether these are two st states for two nations, or if these uh, this is a temp uh, temporary or or a temporary uh, vision of two nations because the, the because the entire project of establishing this thing establishing the state of Israel the, the necessity of recognizing the Palestinian demand demands for nation for a national homeland is it continues the Jew the Jewish uh, the Jewish mission in of enjoying of benefiting from independence in their own homeland and this must be in the background of the negotiations at least as a as a given that colors the understanding a basic understanding of what we are talking about we are talking about a painful cons painful concessions from both sides both sides both sides dreams of, author of authority over the entire land despite their claims for authority over all of the land in order to allow each of the groups the the opportunity for national self identity in part of the land this is exactly what we're dealing with this was the decision made by the united nations this is the this is the this is the this is our vision i'm not sure that it can be implemented right now but there is no other vision I think that now that I've placed the, the I've made the preparations for the for the my final question, which is why it's not just an issue of, po of political philosophy or constitution constitution or ideology. Why is this? Why does this go down go to the deepest roots of the na of, na of Israel's national security? I think that this is true for all countries, but it is especially true for a state such as like the state of Israel. The state of Israel was is under is under many threats. Some of these threats are military. Some of the military threats are the result of the ideological problem. There are many internal conflicts within the Arab world. We see them; they're being formulated, and they are they are, they appear in all different forms: religious, political, ethnical. They're brutal, violent, they're horrible things that are going on. But the, wor the, uh, the capabilities of the Arab world to unite against Israel and the Muslim world to unite against Israel is because Israel is considered, is considered a, a stranger and um, a colonialist, a colonialist imperialists that don't belong here. Those who claim that establishment of the state of Israel was uh, was a historical was a historical distortion that it should never have happened. This can undermine Israel's ability to maintain international convention, uh, international agreements, and its right to fight and its ability to fight for its right to existence and for independence. This is true in Israel within the, the Jewish population of Israel and the Jewish uh, the Jewish population internationally. 
internationally. And the further we are from 47, 48 and from the Holocaust, the further we, we the more time passes from the reasons that the partition plan was presented, the more that Israel is viewed as a conquering rep repressive country, this undermines Israel's ability, ability to protect itself and to continue to exist. So we can say, okay, that's okay that it undermines their capability because that's the, re the reality. It's it's not justified. I wanted to I wanted to argue, and I think that it's true. It is correct and important that it is justified to it is correct to justify Israel as a Jewish country, but we must reduce the claims in the name of the Jewish country so that they don't they, they don't interfere with the human rights of other citizens. And the state of Israel is obligated to the rights of all of its citizens and must recognize the importance of the self identity and the freedom of the of the Palestinian people but some of Israel's enemies a large portion of Israel's and uh, Israel's enemies are not interested in a peace agreement they're not interested in two nations for in two states for two nations they're not interested in protecting the rights of the of the Arab minority in Israel they're looking for the legitimacy to cancel the existence of the Jewish state of Israel and that is diff that would that is nearly impo that is practically impossible under the military with the military circumstances but instead they want to undermine the validity of Israel as a Jewish home, as a Jewish state and this is a critical point because it is impossible because the state could not have been established without the motivation of the Jews who came from all different parts of the world to reestablish the only place in the world in which Jews could not only live well but could could be independent politi politically socially and culturally and f and in their security, if they d that if that power did not exist, then the country would never have been established. If that if without that motivation, Israel never would have developed and never would have become the most free, most liberal, and most rich and developed country in the Middle East. Despite the fact that two years ago it was the poorest country in its resources, this is in the heart, in the nature, in the heart of the human of the Jew of the Jewish nation. It is the explanation for its success. If we give a hand to diluting the legitimacy of the Jewish desire to preserve this, pro the, this immense project, we will convert Israel in the long term to a part, to an inseparable part of the region in which it is situated. And I hope that over the next de decades we'll see it develop We'll see it advance, the entire region advance very much with the help of the State of Israel and the international community. This is extremely important because every country, especially the State of Israel, must recruit international support and also internal cohesion. I will not go into, go, go into the issues of international community, international support, because I don't think you need me to tell you how important international support and recognition is. And the fact that we don't see eye to eye with some of the Western, some of the Western countries is problematic. This is very, very significant to Israel's long-term capabilities to protect itself as a country in which Jews are benefit from the right from from their independence in the last few minutes that i have i want to talk about the internal is the in, in, internal israel jewish issues both from the jewish from the jewish religious perspective and the, the perspective of the min, the arab minority they say that the, the Arab minority says that by defining the state as a, as Jewish and democratic, they claim that the Arabs are not part of this are not part of the state and have do not have equal rights. They claim that that it is impossible to be both Jewish and democratic. If Israel wants to be democratic and it appears to want to do to to be so, it must. Can, it, it must reject its Jewish uniqueness. I think that's incorrect, both conceptually and historically, because the state of Israel is the result of, part of, of splitting the, the territory between the Jews and the Arabs in order to establish two, nation, two states in which there would be a majority of, a majority, the na each nation would have a majority in each. When the UN plan, dev devised the partition plan, this is exactly what they had in mind. They wanted to establish two states. In each one, there would be a majority of 
each one nation would have a majority because we say that it's impossible because if there's an Arab minority in one place, then it means that the other country is not. So maybe the, Pal the Palestinian country won't have any Jews in, inside at all. And we'll take out all the settlements, we'll take out all the sentiments, and there won't be any Jews in that country, at, in that state at all. But then we'll dispute over over converting Israel, converting Israel into a country, into a country that is not Jew, not necessarily Jewish, but one that represents all of its citizens equally. I want to say something about the Arab minority in Israel. I don't want to, I, I can't say enough about how concerned, how fearful I am about their about their rights with and their rights and belonging to this country. I wish that the two that both nations could celebrate in their independence together in this con in this country. The fact that Israel does, Israel continues to be a Jewish country does not remove you from the from being part of the nation. There are many minor many countries with minorities and the co the countries are still dem democratic as long as the rights of the minorities are are maintained. Israel has to improve in this aspect in this aspect, but it's completely different from the claim that it can, and that it has to, it, that it must abandon the, it, it, it must abandon its Jewish uniqueness. And finally, the internal Jewish issue. There is a, there is the demogra demographic claims that the religious or the, the religious numbers are growing, which might be changing. There are different stances that are developing in different ways. But I want to say that the state of Israel, as the national land of the Jewish people, must be a country for all of Jews, for me as well. For me, as a secular, uh, a self-defined secular Jew. It is true that Judaism is a religion, but Judaism is not exclusively a religion. And it is the worst thing that could happen is that for a process in Israel will present Israel as a theocracy that w that is ruled by Jewish law and Torah law. It will be a crisis. It, it will be a crisis, n not only for the state of Israel. State the state of Israel will lose its Jewish cohesion that is so critical to its existence. It is not by coincidence that 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 there that there are co there is common ground between the different sectors in the Jewish in the Jewish state. The state of Israel must acknowledge the rights of the Palestinians for independence and respect. And respect. But we must guarantee that the demographic changes will not convert the situ reality, the situation into a reality in which the state is ruled in any significant, in any significant part by the by the Torah law. It can inspire. So it should definitely be studied. We need lots of understanding and a lot of respect, but it should not define the identity of the country, of the state.